Hello and welcome to Tonic Studios. My name's Alison and today I'm going to share with you kit 73 which is Jingle Bells and Baldos. What have I got to show you today? Oh my word. I am going to show you how to make the baubles and the bells that are in this kit. So let's have a little look, is that? So we'll start off. Um, this is going to be a little bit NPC, but I'm going to say this is going to be a tale of three halves. <laughs> That's the only thing I'm going to say. Maths was never your strong point. No, never, <laughs> never. I can't have a tail of three thirds. That's not the same. No. It's got to be a tail of three halves. So we're gonna. I'm going to show you how to make the flat top. I'm going to show you how to make the pointed base. But you can also put the flat top on the base as well. So that's why I'm going to show you how to make half of that. And then obviously I'll show you how to make the bell. So we'll start with the flat top. So we are going to need six of this shape die. So it is this one here. Your dies may be arranged in a different order to this. So it's that one there. Okay. So you've got the flat top there. And you're going to need two of the hexagons. This is for each half. So if you're making two flat tops for the bauble, you'll need to double this. Okay. Right, I can put the die back and we'll move them out to the way. And the hexagon then is this one here. So let's push those over there and we'll make this part first. There we go. So I've got six of these. And we treat them all the same. Okay, so fold all your tabs in and your top tab and your base tab. So we'll do the same with the next one. All your score lines are put there by the die. You don't need to do any drawings on your scoreboard or anything at all. And dies are very clever. There we go. And again. There we are, there's four. Next one. The next thing I'm going to do as well, I'm going to put a little bit of a curve into these panels because we it's a bauble. So we need to round it. There we are. That's the last of my folds. There we go. Let's get my paper creaser. So just hold the base, the tab on the end, and give a curl. And then you'll start to see the shape of your bulb will come in. So we're going to do the same with all of these. There we are, we'll go the same direction. There we are. Okay, now we're going to glue these together. So the easiest part I found was to glue them all to the hexagon. So each side of these fits on the hexagon. So let's get our glue and I'm going to pop a hexagon underneath and on the top. 
covers all your work ends, but also keeps everything neat. There we are, bit of glue there. And so I'm lining it up so the edges, hopefully you can see it. Take that bit of glue away. I'm right up to the score line. And we keep going. We build it up around the hexagon. So we'll do the same again. Pop that in place. In kitchen a bit. Am I? Okay. <laughs> there we are. Move it along. Next one. Take away any excess glue as well as you go in. So we'll pop the next one. Just keep working around. Make sure all your tabs are inside as well because there's nothing worse than having the tabs on the outside and you've got to fiddle at the end to try and get them inside. There we are, that's half of it done. Next one. the next one. I'm going to pop a bit of glue on the last two. There we go. And the last one in place now. So you're going to make sure these tabs go underneath and this one was over the top of those tabs. Sometimes you need to push this one a little bit. There we go. That's it. So there is the start ends of your bauble. So we're going to flip it over now and then we're going to start gluing these panels together. So work from the bottom, I tend to glue all three of the circular tabs to start with. You don't really need to, to put any glue on the square tabs, they are just there as fillers but you can glue them if you want to. So start at the bottom and then work your way up because you want to keep this curved effect as well. That's what makes it harder that you can't glue these flat because you're going to lose that curved effect. There we are. So there's the first side done. So we'll carry on moving around the bauble. Again, starting at the base. I find it easier to start at the base because you've got more access to that bottom tab before you glue the top one. There we are, there's the second one done. Now as you can see inside, if you want to pop a little bit of glue onto these square tabs, then you can. And keep them nice and flat. A little bit there. There we are. I think I did put a little bit of glue on that one. There we go. So keep working around. Again, a little bit of glue on all the semicircle tabs. If ever you see the semicircle tabs on anything that we make, it usually means that there's a curve in the product um, and it gives you a little bit of a clue. There we go. So next one. I 
I'm using our deluxe adhesive because it's a quicker grab. So you're not holding for too long. Especially when you've got that curve in it, you want it to grab pretty quickly. Definitely, but obviously be kind to your glue, as we always say. Absolutely. And what cardstock have you gone for for these? These are 216, they're our classic card. I would say this is an easier card to glue when you've got a curve. Mm -hmm. You may find a mirror card a little bit harder to glue and certainly the glitter cards are harder to glue as well. So I would keep those for my layers to add on top then. So keep your base pretty plain card. I mean, obviously, if you're more experienced and you're comfortable doing the panels out of uh, Miri card, then obviously give it a go. It's not a never do, but I think you do need that little bit more experience. And obviously know how well your glue works as well. Mm. So that is the last one. As you can see, that is the inside of my bauble. So the next bit now, I've got another hexagon that I'm going to pop inside. There we go. So that will sit over all your work ends, right at the base. Make sure I'm... Oh, is my head in the way? No, you're fine. Okay, thought you'd see a big fat head in the corner <laughs> then. So the next thing we're going to cut, I've got two of these, but I'm only going to use one at the moment, and that is your large hexagon die. So that is going to sit underneath all these tabs. And then we're going to pop one on the top then. So the easiest way I find to do this is put your glue on one of the tabs and hold this in place and make sure it really has grabbed. It lines up really easily. The corner lines with the edge of the previous die and it goes right up to the line. If you do get a little bit of glue that oozes out don't worry at this point because you're going to cover this. And then start working your way around. And then each one will be in the correct place. Fold out all your tabs at this point. And then we'll just keep going. A little bit more glue on the next one. At this point, I wouldn't worry about any glue seepages because this is going to be covered because we've got the other hexagon to go on top as well to keep everything all hidden. Our secrets are well hidden here. Hiding all your workings. Yes. Well, we don't want to give any secrets away, do we? Definitely not. So this room just gets to sort of adding structure and stability really. Absolutely, absolutely. And then I'm going to add some panels on the top of this. Now normally we say put your layers on first. I don't if it's a curve because it makes it harder to curve to the shape I want in the first place. I find it easier to curve the layer and add it on later. So we're just going to carry on now. I've got three more just to pop in. If you find it easier, you could even pop one of the opposites to where you start and then go back to the others. So we'll do that one and we'll go back to the other two tabs. There we go. Give that a little push. Make sure we're in the 
right place. There we go. And then the last two then. And for a kit, this is quite a substantial bauble. There we are. It's pressed down inside. And the last one going in place. I think it's going to make a very hefty size gift box. I think so. I think so. I mean, you imagine doing these for baby's first Christmas and mm -hmm. things. These are going to come out every single year. You're going to be making f for gifts for people to put their little prizes in, but they're going to hang on the tree. They're going to be packed away with your trimmings every year. Out they're going to come again. You're going to love them. I know you are. Right, so there's the start of our bauble. So we have the lovely dome. If we were going to make a bauble, I'm trying to see if I got one here that has... Hmm, don't think I have. But you could make another one of these with a flat base. And that would be one type of bauble. So how do we put the next bit together? I'm going to show you with a pointed base. But you can make it with two of these. So the pointed base I've cut in a different colour. Just so you can see exactly where everything is going. So we're going to do the same thing with this. Fold all our tabs first. So we've got six of these again. And we're going to give it that curve like we did with the top. I think you're going to have a little production line of these. <laughs> Grab a family member to do the cut-in for you and you can be assembling. That was my favourite with my son. He would sit and cut and I would assemble. There we are. And you could have a cut-in session and sit in front of the TV and pop all these together. Pop your Christmas film on. That'd be nice. Love a Christmas film. Okay, so we've got six of these again. I'm just checking. Have I got six? Yes. Yes, I have. <laughs> Do you know what? I had a blank then. I thought I only had five. So we're doing that curve again. So this time I'm holding the tab, the big tab in the middle. And just curve in from there. There we are. Last one. So this time we don't have any anything to guide us. We just have the bauble. So we are going to start at the base because it's going to come to a point. So if we start at the bottom and then work up to the top. And that I found was the easiest way to do it again. There we go. So hold it till it's stuck. And then work to the other tabs then. There's nothing worse than the bottom tab and a win when you were halfway through gluing the others. Definitely not. So I'm going to do this one from the inside. There we are. So start at the bottom, work your way up. So you're bringing in the curve to the crease line. Now the top one is a little bit more of a curve. I don't want to see the gap. I'm trying to cover the gap. That's what I'm aiming for. So we've got a bit more of a curve for the top one. But I'm pushing it back because I don't want an overlap here. So I'm making sure that that curve line is up to the fold. So same again. 
go from the point That's the beauty of glue. You've always got a little bit of a wiggle. Very handy, especially for making things like this. I think. Absolutely. Okay. So now we're going to put some glue on the other tabs. I mean, I know we've said it many a time. I was never a fan of glue. But once I started, there was no going back then. I've stuck with glue ever since. I'm quite happy using glue. It just needs that confidence, I think, mm -hmm. just to give it a go. And I find that they stay together longer then. Because I found tape was pulling apart a little bit and I was a little bit frustrated with it. Because there's nothing worse than, you know, say you've packed all these baubles away this Christmas. When you come to use them next year, they're all in bits in your box. You don't want that. You want them to look the same next year as they do this year. And by using the glue, that is exactly how they will look. There we are. So do the base one first. And then we move up to the other tabs. So are you going to be giving these as gifts? Are they going to be decorating your house? I can see them hanging all over the house. I can see these as obviously as an advent because mm -hmm. we make so many advents, don't we? Could you imagine that, like them all hanging on a stick or something? Or even like a the white trees. Yeah. The twiggy trees. That'd be nice. Different bauble to open for every day. Or oh, bauble or bell. A bauble or bell, isn't it? I think that would be lovely. We need to advent something this year. We haven't done that yet. We haven't. We haven't. We've got a few more people than last year though, haven't we? I know, I think we've actually got too many to have a one every day. Proper advent. Hmm. We're going to have to contemplate this, aren't we? We haven't got much more time. No, it's already mid-October. So we're going to have to start cracking on with mm. something. I think last year we made the box that became our advent calendar. I have a feeling it was one of the Cyber Week launches. I think it was. So we made I it think in it Cyber was. Week and then started it basically the next week, wasn't it? Yes. Wow. Huh? I can't believe we that did. was a year ago. I know. It is crazy. It is absolutely crazy. And this kit, so this was a bit of a um, fan request, shall we say. It was. I think at this time was. of year, last year, we released a very spring themed kit because obviously we're working so far in advance mm -hmm. and your kits, you know, we launch them on the 20th of the month, but they then go to, don't go out until the first of the next month. So we were clearly working ahead, but everyone said, oh, you know, we were expecting something Christmassy or something a bit festive. So uh, that is what we've done this year. That's it, we heard you loud and clear. We've given you something a bit festive and a bit Christmassy. Quite a bit festive. Oh, I think so, I think so. But I think this is a kit that you're gonna get out year after year after year and you're gonna have loads of fun with it. What if you've got a Christmas wedding? <gasps> oh, you can make amazing decorations. What about these for favours? Yeah. You could have like a table centre that had a little selection of baubles and bells yeah and then each place setting has a, their own yeah oh I think that would be lovely it really would we're going to have to think about a craft one project as well we are do you guys have any requests perhaps we'll ask you what you'd like yeah what would you like to see done hmm have to think on this one, aren't we? Mm. Have to look at how much cardstock we've got, how big of a project we can get. Would away you with. like us to do something not just with the cardstock in the kit? 
Would you like us to make it with extra cardstock for a bigger project? Because we have done that in the past, haven't we? We've gone with a bigger project. Mm -hmm. So I'm on the last one now. Home straight. There we go. And then we'll do the last three tabs inside. So there's no hexagon or anything to go with the base of this one because hopefully all your points are meeting together. I mean, if, if they're not, there may be a little bit more practice and, and you will get there. We're actually not going to see this unless you turn your bell over, which is why it's in a different colour. So there's my base, you can see they all line up together and the inside of the box, oh, I just moved that one, everything lines up in there as well. So our next bit, there's always another bit isn't there? <laughs> I am going so to pop in two of our three halves. This is two of our three halves. Excellent. So. Hang on, I tell you what, let me put the hexagon inside first. I think you need that structure, don't you? You do need this. So this is going to be exactly the same as we did with the last one, and I'm going to pop this inside. So start at one end. I think this is an ingenious thing. So I think, do we start this in the, is it in the Easter egg this year? I we think so. reinforcing I think it is. It kind of helps to hold the shape, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It does. And it holds it really, really well. Mm. Right, let's come down a little bit. If you find that your tab is not lining up with the centre, shimmy down a little bit. There we are. So we'll turn all our tabs out. The other way you could do it, as I was showing you earlier, you can just do the opposite ones. I think that's what I normally do because then I know that you know you're in the right place. Meeting then. both sides, yeah. So we'll do that this time. <laughs> because sometimes you're a little bit out all the way around, and the last one then struggles. I think this way it also stops the hexagon from kind of moving because you've anchored yes. it in two places. Yes, it does. So there's our both sides, now we're going to do the others. And you don't have to hold so much then, do you? No. Because you've anchored your two points. Mm -hmm. There we go. It must be empty a container or something today. There's something happening out there, isn't there? Huge amounts of clunking. So apologies if you can hear that. There we go. It's never quiet in the warehouse. No. Never quiet. The little elves are always busy. Mm -hmm. So I'll we'll put a last bit of glue on this tab. Oh, am I cutting it again? A little bit of cutting. Right, bring that back up, pop that down, there we go, right, so if I was leaving it at this, then I would take this little tab, and it is this one on your die set, fold it in half, this fits perfectly over your tab. So I would glue that in place. Well, I'm going to glue this one in place anyway. Be a rebel. I am. I am going to be a rebel. So go over your tab. Perfectly in place. There we are. Make sure, though, that you're lined up to the fold line at the back here. So if you're not quite to the front, doesn't matter. 
it's going to be covered but you you should be you should be close to it so this is what is going to hinge the top and the bottom together and then your bauble opens let's do it without my hand in the way <laughs> so that is how it's going to open the next thing I'm going to do now so on the red one I am going to pop this over the top again it hides all your workings but also it provides extra stability for your bauble oh I know what I haven't done and I best do that first so there's a little circle with the score line in the centre so I'm going to use that fold the score line and then I am going to this is going to be the top so I don't I want to see the nice side on the top I don't want to see the underneath side and I'm going to glue that in place so again place this up to the score line and hold it about in the centre of your bauble if you're out a tiny bit it's not going to matter but that is how it's going to sit and that then is going to be sandwiched underneath this next hexagon that goes over the top cover in your tab make sure you don't over you don't go over the score line now because you're going to need that score line and press it down all the way around there we go so that is your bauble top I could do the same with this I could glue that tab then onto there pop on my hexagon before I put the hexagon on they'll put your little closure tab on the side and that could be your bauble shape and that could be two flat top baubles or it could be a pointed bauble with a flat top entirely up to you but I'm going to make a bell so the next thing we wanted is your bell shape so we've got six of these again I bet you didn't see that coming I bet you didn't <laughs> and obviously your bell shape looks like a bell shape so again fold your score lines and fold your little triangle tab at the bottom and fold this up slightly the tabs go down and this one goes down so it's that one is a you don't need a definite fold but you do need a little bit of a crease so that is the shape that you're going to need so again we're going to do the same thing with all of these Fold the base up slightly. I am going to give these a little bit of a curve again because it's a bell. Mm -hmm. And I kind of encourage that cardstock to start curving, don't you? Exactly. There we are. The more help you can give it, the better. Makes sense because we are dealing with a flat product yeah ultimately not a piece of fabric that is used to bending sometimes when i think about all of the things that we make cardstock do it is really quite bizarre absolutely that we take flat sheets of card and we turn them into these elaborate things that are very much not flat we turn them into phenomenal things i think mm. 
you know, the designs our designers come up with. Oh, I don't know where it comes just from. just mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. There we are. So that's the last one. So now, I don't want to curl the base because the base is flat. But I want to curl this bit in the middle. And I want it to go concave. I want it to go in on the right side. So I flipped it over. And I'm just going to go up to the score line. So I want, can you see that? Mm -hmm. I want it to be curved in the middle. Think of how your bell shape is. the point I start doing over the edge of the desk instead. Yes, you can. You can. You'll see even less then though if I do it over <laughs> the edge of the desk. Sometimes you can bow it just in your warm hands. Yeah. Just mould it between your, your fingers and just keep pressing it and turning it like that. Right, so the next bit now. The bit I would do first is your base of the bell. So it's this little triangle first. So that is what I'm going to glue first. So that is your straight line. There we are. And I don't move on until that is glued. So now we're going to start moving up the bell and gluing all the tabs. So a little bit of glue on each of them. Give them a little pinch. Move up to the next one. And keep going. And the last one. And again, you should be, wipe off any glue. Your score lines at the top then should be level. And they are, you see where my fingers are? They are level. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna pinch that just to make sure. And if you turn the flap under from the top, the top tab, it's easier to pinch. So next one, same again. Stick your triangle tab at the base. Pinch that. I hope you've got some nice music to play for this, Lee. I'm sure I can find the uh, elevator music. Oh, I'm sure you can. So the next thing now, glue on the tabs. Karen always tells me to speed it up. Well, there's a lot of this I think you can speed up. No, we don't do that here. Everything in real time. You could. Or you could speed it up at home yeah. if you wanted Feel to. Feel free to fast forward. There we are. So the last one, and I'm going to pop the tab down because it seems to push it up to the score line better if you turn that tab down. This is another top tip for you. So that's three gone. Next one. There we are. Hold them for a second. Turn it over. Pop some glue on these tabs. And again, hopefully you shouldn't have any gaps where the seam is. Just try and move the next piece up so you don't get a gap. And then the last one to pinch together. 
if you run your finger down you can feel if you've gone over too far that was the chair squeaking <laughs> just to let you know <laughs> Karen's had very squeaky shoes today. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she's telling us anyway. Yeah, that's the story we've heard. <laughs> I think we've all we're all getting our winter shoes out and things now. Mm -hmm. It's not nice. No. <sighs> I want the sun to come back. I don't mind the winter, I think. When we are in the Christmas season and we've got all the lights everywhere and everything, I can kind of cope with winter mm. then. When it's cold but dry. and I can cope with the cold and dry. I can't cope with the cold and wet. No. So again, there's our tabs. All blue, dready. So press them into place. I love the shape of this. This base of the bed, the bottom of the bell started off as a holder for the bauble. And so it was just meant to be like a, a way to rest it if you didn't want to hang it, wasn't it? And it ended up as a bell. So it was a very happy accident, wasn't it? And this is our Geordie's design. There we are. So we're on the last one now. for a second and then pop some glue on the tabs If I'm not lined up at the base, then my tabs are not going to line up at the top. And that is not what we want at all. And your bell will clang in a weird way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have a wonky, wonky clang on your bell. And that's not what anybody wants. There we are, the last one. Pinch that at the top and then we're going to join them all together. So this time now I'm going to glue them all at the same time just because it's a little bit easier but make sure you turn all your tabs inwards. Hold that base until it grabs. And then we move up the bell. That is the base. So where do we go next? Pull all these tabs up. No prizes for guessing. And this will just push into the centre. It is, I don't know where Jodie had this idea. No, I don't. It is just ingenious. There we are. You can push it in from the base as well. Hold on. Pop it either way. There we are. But all these are going to glue. Oh, I'm a little bit on the walk here. What have I done? Just, there we are. 
that's it. So there is my bauble. Why am I not? Right. Oh, one of them's undone, that's right. How I really didn't hold that long enough, did I? Be kind to your glue. Exactly. Especially since you're putting the bauble inside, you're going to need to give it that little bit longer. Exactly. I think this was the one that I re-glued. And I didn't put any more glue on it. Naughty me, isn't it? I think, how did I do this? I think I did the push it in from the underneath. From the base? Yeah, so put I glue on I pushed it in from the top last time, but either one will do. There so you keep going until it reaches the top of the tabs. And you might think it's a little bit snug, but it does fit. So there we go, that is all gonna sit around there. So I'm gonna start, ooh. Start gluing from one side and I'm going to do exactly the same I'm going to do the opposite tab and I know it's anchored then so make sure you're up to the score line and press down so we go opposite tab oh this one's coming down again I'm definitely not being kind today what is wrong with me we hold this for a second mm -hmm. Pinch that over and then we'll glue it down. So I'm going opposite glue tab to the one I've just glued. There we are. Push it in till it comes up to the score line and then press down. There we go. If you find you're not lining up exactly, it's not going to matter again because they are going to be covered. But you should be pretty near to that hexagon in the centre. And as you work around, they'll all come into play. There we are. She's got a tiny little gap. So we'll have a little bit of glue on there. We'll have a little bit of glue on there. Once we've done this, then it's going to be the lovely task of decorating. Always the best part. Always the best, yes. When you get to make it really blingy and festive. Yes. And this kit is very blingy and festive. It is. Even though you've got lots of classic cardstock in there, you need that for your bases. You've also got your mirror card, you've got your glitter card. You've got um, you've got lots of mirror cards actually. Mm. You've got green, red, gold. Yeah. Let's pop a bit of glue on that one as well. I love all the little details of so the holly sprigs and the swirls that you've got. Oh, and all I of the little love the swirl. That's it. All the extra little touches. I mean, I can see that swirl cropping up on your cards this Christmas. Mm -hmm. Um. It could even be part of a hanging system for the bauble, couldn't it? Could be. It reminds me of the little extra hangers you buy for the baubles. Yeah, the ones where they go on the tree. So, that is our bell. So if you look underneath, you've got your pointed bauble. It reminds me of a lemon squeezer. It does. <laughs> Especially it does. when it's sat like that. Absolutely it does. And then there's your top. So let's join these together, is it? First things first, I'm going to join the tab. So fold your tab over, glue on the back. And then you're going to pop this down hold it inside and make sure that you are if I hold it there you need to be up to that score line I'm hoping you can see it mm -hmm. don't go over it though make sure you're lined on the sides so that it all functions properly there we are 
there and this is going to be you do this for the bobbles as well you attach this to the top and then to the base your next thing then is going to be your little closure tab and I would say pop a little bit of glue put your two tabs together your closures and then close your base so you know then they lined up smart I like that and then, we add and then you, can, tips. you can give it a little wiggle then because maybe you're not quite where the score line is but you know you're in the, the right place there we are so now I've got a green layer to pop on top I've done this I've changed the colours so you can see exactly what I'm doing you can do the different colours if you want to or you do everything in the same colour entirely up to you I think at Christmas you can get away with mixing your red and your green. Oh, I think so. I think so. There we are. So that is going to go over the top and hold everything neatly. I love the finish on this. There we go. Press it down, make sure it's all stuck. A little bit more on the front because you don't want to see this bow in. And again at the back because you want the hinge nice and flat as well. There we are. So that is the basis of your bell. So now I've got some layers to pop on. So I've got some lovely glitter card. So again, the inside, there's not, you know, this all cut out, so there's not a lot of card in the middle. So this will bow, bow beautifully. I can't get my words out now. <laughs> it's late in the day. It is. It is late in the day. So a couple of little dots in the middle. Because I find when they're very lacy, sometimes they want to lift a little bit. Mm -hmm. There we are. But I'm going to take some glue off the middle. Right, now you're just going to start working around your bauble. These don't go on the base. They go on the top part. So that little straight edge, they don't go on there. Next one. And just keep working around. A couple of little dots in the middle. What about these for favours on the Christmas table? That'd be nice. I used to like to do theatre tickets for everybody. It's part of the, you know, it's part of the Christmas present. Mm -hmm. Um, my mum and dad loved going to the opera. My father loved the opera. My mother just liked going for the costumes. And um, my son loved going to a musical. So they'd have different tickets to see different things. But it was something to look forward to in the new year then. Yeah, that's a nice idea. I like to look for alternatives to crackers. Yes, me I like too. The idea of the crackers, but I find oh, it's just a bag of rubbish at the end, it is, isn't it? It is, unfortunately. So I tend to buy the paper hats and a little joke, or yeah. you can write them yourself. But I like to put them into a gift box that doubles as a play setting oh, with that's something. A nice so idea. we tend to do maybe a scratch card or something yeah. like that. I've done a scratch card. Which is always or a lottery nice. ticket. Yeah. But if they win, then you have to ask for half shares. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> That's why we do a scratch card because then you you know instantly. So everyone goes around the table and oh, scratches yes. theirs off before dinner. And uh, yeah, if you don't, you know, share in the cooking. 
however much you've won, then obviously you don't get your Christmas dinner. Oh, too right. <laughs> too right. A friend of mine did um, lottery tickets for her wedding. And I said, what if somebody wins, Fran? Well, should they just going to have to share then, aren't they? She said. <laughs> But we didn't, we had a couple of winners, but we didn't have any big winners there. No. So she didn't mind then. She didn't ask for shares. What do you do for Christmas? Are you still a fan of the crackers or do you do an alternative? Are there eco crackers? I'm sure there must there be. There must be something, mustn't there? It was always just the, like you say, the kind of, plastic stuff that you get in them obviously it has that kind of nostalgia for me mm. but that's the stuff it just ends up getting thrown away no one keeps it, it no one uses not. it even when you buy the Dira crackers it's it's a little bit of metal then, yeah exactly it? instead of being a plastic something it's a metal version of the same thing <laughs> you, you, uh, you still don't use it or really keep it so no that's very true you know, it's not very really often they tend to use a mini clip and things. No. What else did they used to have? Like a little mini tape measure. Tape measure. I mean, measure. that one I might actually use in this day and age. But a yo-yo. A yo-yo. It would be a yeah. yo-yo, wouldn't that? I used to enjoy the ones that had the magic fish and the magic calculators in yes. them. Yes. always good. There we are. So we're on the last one now. For our panel. And again, you can do a different colour top to bottom. The opportunities are endless for this, and the possibilities rather, not opportunities. I told you I didn't have words today. <laughs> but I really can't wait to see what you make with this. So please tag us in your makes. Pop them on our Facebook group, Official Tonic Facebook group. If you're not a member, ask to join and we will okay it and you can share in all the the christmas festivities with the rest of our members because they all love a good time don't they at christmas absolutely so now we've got the panels that will fit on the top so I'll turn that around so i'm keeping the theme going i guess lovely town the bling Oh, me too. I'm not a huge glitter fan the rest of the year. Don't mind a little bit of white glitter, but I'm not a huge glitter fan. But Christmas time, I just think is a must. You cannot have Christmas without glitter. A requirement, shall we say? Yes, absolutely it is. So you can see how easily, because we've cut out the centre, these just bow beautifully just to stick on top. And they've cut really nicely as well. They do. This is, obviously it's our glitter card, we wouldn't be using anything else. And it is in your kit. I bet you can't wait to have your kit now. <laughs> and these will be shipping, so this will be first working day in December, it it? Will. So I think that'll be the second. Yes. Oh no, that was next year when we were looking at that. Yes, funny story. We were looking at the days and how they fall in December next year for something <laughs> completely unrelated. That wasn't for this year at all. I don't know when it is this year. It may be the first. Th no, oh, it may be the third. Oh, I don't know. Right, no, I can't first, work it out. First, I think, if it's the second next year. Should be the it first. It should be the first this year, shouldn't Let's it? Let's see what the calendar says. It is Friday the 1st. Lovely. Oh, I've got a little bit not pushed out there. Oh, and another one. What was I doing with these? No, it'll be November 1st, won't it? It's only October. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> We've clearly <laughs> lost the plot today. Oh, yeah. lordy, lordy. But we got lots to come up before Christmas, haven't we? We have. Lots of exciting things. Because the little elves in the craft room have been very busy as well. You know, we keep saying to you, we've got things that we can't share with you. Mm -hmm. Well, they'll be shared. What I would say is when you're lining these up, 
whichever way you go from the bottom or the top pick a point and make sure they all at the same point going around because it gives a neater finish then so we're nearly done a little bit further do you enjoy your craft along mm. or is this something you wouldn't think of joining in I think it's something we've done every month this year for the kids. I think we have. I think we have. There we are. Ooh, oh, that's so, in case you haven't joined any of our craft alongs, mm -hmm. basically, we um, ahead of time we put out a cut list of pieces that you would need to have pre cut and ready to go from your kit. So, just from the supplies that come in your kit generally. Um, and then we go live. Sometimes we go a little bit bigger though, don't we? Sometimes we do. But Sometimes we keep we that then to, to card we know you would have at home. So like a bit of white card stock or a piece yes. of black or something like that. Um, yeah, we go live and we actually make the project there and then with you. And you can either choose to watch us and make later. Mm -hmm. We don't mind that. Absolutely not. We're very flexible. <laughs> But yeah, if, uh, if you haven't joined before, that's something that we have done already so far this year. And I'm sure we'll be doing it for this kit as well. If you've got any kits and you're looking for ideas as well, mm. have a little look back onto YouTube. Probably in the live section, I would think. Yes, it will be. So when you're on our channel, you'll notice there's tabs across the top. One of them, I think, says videos. One of them says shorts. And then you'll have one for live as well. And it'll be all under the live tab. And it may give you another idea to do with your kit. Mm. Especially, um, I know we've had quite a few kits go into the warehouse sale recently. Yes, we have. So uh, if you've picked up a kit in there and you're looking for some extra ideas. Yeah, good plan. Okay. So much kitchen going on here, but I know you need to see. To I am so sorry. <laughs> I'm very, very sorry. It's really no. not easy to line these things up it's from a no. distance, is it? I am trying. There we go. So that is our bauble. Now a bell. Our bell. Our bell. Bauble is now a bell. Yeah. So it is very festive at this point. That hasn't caught. So we'll have a little bit more glue then. There so the next bit now. One more bit, we need a hanger to hang it up on the top here. Yeah. What do we need for this? Right, I thought I had two of them. I am very sorry, I think I may have to move the mat. Oh no. I know, because I think it's gone underneath. Okay, that's oh, fine. It's not. No. Oh, I got it. So right. if we're a bit wonky now. Uh, down a bit on the right, a bit more. Bit more. There we go. There we are. Oh, <laughs> close enough. I know. Right. So this bit. What are we doing with this bit? We have. Let me find. What am I looking for? Uh, the hanger and the little tag. There's the hanger. So you need two of those. And we need this one. Shut off me day. We need two of these. So first of all, we're going to take the two little hangers. And there's a score line right in the middle. So we're going to fold those in half on both of them. There we are. Then we're going to put a little bit of glue right the way around the top. And we're going to glue these two together. It's a little bit fiddly. Put your bases together first and then come up to the top. Try and get these so they are lined up perfectly because it gives that overall effect then. There we are. Then you're going to open 
the base out. So that's my first bit. Oh, make sure that doesn't open yet. Because I don't want it to. <laughs> so the next thing I'm going to do now, take one of these, fold all your score lines. And then the triangle score lines as well. There we are, the last one. So these will all fold up together and give you a little hexagon. So glue your triangle into the next tab. So you want the first one now to line up right up to the score line. Work your way around. Being kind to your glue. Yes, <laughs> not rushing. I'm always conscious how long I take. I think that's why we tend to rush. If you're at home, you've got all the time in the world Look, I got bits of glue all over my fingers. I hope you're not watching me on a big screen now, because that's <laughs> scary. <laughs> a little bit more glue because it's dried. My glue is drying on my nib here. Yeah. Let's get rid of that. We've had it nice and warm in here today, then. It's been toasty in here today. This is the first day we've had the heating back on. And the last one, I'm going to do the two triangles together. I'm going to push that one inside. Hold that one. And that one. So you almost have like a little cap. Reminds me like a little fez. <laughs> Doesn't it? Just a hexagon like fez. <laughs> So, the next one now, these two little hangers that we glue together, I am going to pop through here. There's a little slit in the centre. The hanging bit is going to go through the middle. Give it a little wiggle. There we go. That's it. There we are. Hoping you can see it. Yeah. 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 And then I'm going to glue these two inside the base because it's all about that base. That's the one. No treble. No treble. There we go. So that's all secured in there. Now we're going to fold exactly the same as we did with the last one. But what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to leave a tiny little bit of a gap only a tiny bit because this has to fit over the other one and I would rather have the top one fitting over the bottom one mm -hmm. so you've got a neat edge because otherwise you're going to have a rough edge showing at the top of your bauble and that's not what you want either no again you want to make people guess how did you make this so this time the score lines are there, but I'm going to kind of come in probably about, oh, it's not even half a mil. It's less than that, I would say, but a tiny, tiny fraction. And then glue. There we are. Work your way around, doing the same thing each time. What you can do when you've gone about halfway around, you can have a little try on the other bauble and see does it fit. Mm -hmm. Smart idea. So I've done three. So there's my other bauble, so, uh, my base of the bauble sat inside. So I can work these 
around. Be careful with the last one because you're going to have to push that underneath. So now we can glue these now. And you can also put a little bit of glue underneath. So these all glue together. There we are. We'll do it all the way around. Have I done that one? No, a little bit in there. But don't pinch the last one until you pop that tab in. Very important point. Absolutely. Because you're going to be left with a tab that's got nowhere to live. And you know what you end up doing then? You chop it off, don't you? So I want a little bit more glue on that tab. And then just keep squeezing them until they're all held together. Have I got glue on that one? No. Because I put the glue on the base, I didn't have it on the top bit. So that is your little hanger. Excellent. It's such a clever idea though. It really is. Jody, you're a genius. So this now will sit on the top there of my bell. Or your bauble, whichever you've made. There we go. So we'll have a little bit of ribbon so I can tie this together. So we're going to have to have a nice bow, I think. So we pop the ribbon through there and the top and tie these together. You'll have a choice of ribbons in, well not a choice, you, you'll receive one of two ribbons in your kit. You'll either have a thin ribbon, three a three mil ribbon, or you'll have a nine mil ribbon. There we go. So there's our bell tied together. Now we need to decorate. So I've got a little tag. So the tag is in the kit as well. So there's your tag. So I've cut one in green, I cut one in silver, and then there's also a little word in there that says joy. So I've cut that as well. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue just around the top. I'm not concerned about the bottom being loose. I quite like that actually. Nice, gives it a good effect. It does, it does. So this is going to glue up the top here. But I'm going to want a little bit of ribbon. I've cut some swirls, of course. But again, these could. Oh, you just off screen there, out. Am I off? Sorry. These could be hangers. Mm. It could hang it on your tree. So entirely up to you how you choose to use them. So I think we're gonna pop some little swirly bits. I've also got a little bit of holly. Now on the holly, I'm hoping you can see it. Can you see the veining on there? Mm -hmm. There's two little dies in the set that will also give you the veining. So they could be that they are like a fern sprig or you can add them to the top of your holly. I love the idea of this. I just think it is attention to detail. Absolutely it is. As little glue as you can put because they will squelch on to every. You think you've only put a tiny bit So there's the other one. The beauty of putting it onto a shiny mirror is you can take a baby wipe to it. And you uh, certainly can. Wipe it off if you need to. You certainly can. And we also have 
some gorgeous little holly berries. I think this is delightful. So I'm going to pop them on the centre there. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on each side. And, oops, they're so teeny tiny. <laughs> I'm going to add those to the top. Oh, stuck to my finger. Okay, so obviously it's a tag, so a tag has to have a bit of ribbon. So let's pop a bit of ribbon through this tag. you through. There we are. So I don't want a huge amount of ribbon because I'm not going to tie it. I'm just going to glue it. So there's my, my little joy. So I'm going to pop that onto the top. Oh, make sure joy is about the right way. <laughs> Definitely don't want to do the wrong way. A little bit of glue on the back. And I'm going to stick this just there. Remember you are gluing to... Oh, let's bring it in. You are gluing to glitter card as well. So give it a couple of seconds. Then I'm going to pop some of these swirls underneath. Again, remembering you are gluing straight on top of glitter. So I'll have that there. I'll have the other one. Mm, which one? The other one. Over there, maybe. Oh, my tag is moving. I'm just going to pop that there. And then I'm going to pop my holly right on top there. Nice. And I think the hole in the holly leaves, you can actually use that to go through. Like your ribbon could go through yes, there if you wanted true. it to as well. That is very true. So, that is my jingle bell make. Do you want to show it on camera too so we can see all of the pretty details? All the up, glory. Up close. Oh, back a bit. Oh. There. Nice. Yeah. Look at those pretty patterns. Isn't they lovely? lovely. Obviously, because I've just glued it, I would weight that a little bit just to push it down. But that is beautiful. Very nice. Hope you've enjoyed the make. This is available on the website to buy now. It is Kit 73. So have a little look. Don't forget, if you are going to make some of these, pop them on the Facebook page and tag us in your makes. But also, the biggest thing of all is give us a little thumbs up and hit that notification bell. Ding! And then every time we're on YouTube, you will know about it. Thank you for joining me today. Happy crafting.